Good morning. As you can see, got the jacket, got the backpack, got my suitcase. Only means one thing, another trip is coming up. This time I was home for about five days. It was a nice time to kind of relax a little bit. Saw some rain in Seattle, very rare for me. Swear to goodness, I always dry when I'm here. It's about seven o'clock in the morning, heading to the airport. The first place I'm going to, I, I've been wanting to go because I, I'm fascinated with, with mysteries and it's ancient history. It's just such a mystical place and culture. Of course, I'm talking about Egypt. And then after that, head over to Pakistan. And then that'll bring us to Christmas and my birthday. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm gonna be. Oh, first things first, let's go to Egypt. Thank you so much. Today I'm flying short Royal Jordanian, Royal Jordan, I don't know where it is. Huh. No Royal Jordanian. All right, I found it. It's, it's connected with American Airlines. It makes more sense now. It's so festive. Yeah. This thing is just so like a warrior, road warrior. This luggage. Thank you. So itinerary is Chicago, Jordan, and then Cairo, and it's gonna take me about close to 30 hours. Food here looks really good. This is probably one of the better lounges I've been to in Chicago. Big shout out to Bruce, by the way, for uh, telling me about this. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be the best thing I eat over the course of the next 12 hours. The impossible sausage. <laughs> I can tell that's not meat. I mean, it tastes like a sausage, but very weird sausage. Flavor is not bad. It's got a weird texture. They're calling my name. I feel like I'm in trouble again. coffee. Their outfits are so cool. Probably besides uh, Singapore Airlines, the most unique flight in the office I've seen. It's a good size screen. For comparison, here is my Samsung. It's pretty wide over here, so it's not as slanted. The configuration is 222. So yeah, if you're sitting by the window, getting to the bathroom, it's gonna be a little tricky, but walking in, the, the cabin kind of looks like a like a cabin, like wood panels almost. It's not a huge space, a little armrest, but luckily there's a little space here, so it doesn't get your elbow doesn't get bumped when the cars come by. And you're really close to your neighbor. It's kind of cool to give you a little little sticker so you can please wake me for my meal. Do not disturb. How do I kill this one? Happy, smiley, feel good. Ooh. Food looks very typical. A little seaweed salad, scallops, and shrimp. Ooh, the shrimp looked like it got incredibly sunburned. Very, very average tasting. A little tough, but the flavor is good. The rice is actually really nice. This balsamic rice, very aromatic, very flavorful. 
rice is my favorite thing on this plate. So that was a very mediocre meal. The bathroom, also there's no toothbrushes. This is all it is in business class? It's a very tiny business class. Absolutely exhausted. I'm still jet lagged from back when I was in Asia. So I gotta go to bed. It's a very crumbly pancake. Welcome to Amman. It's flying over. I didn't get the window seat, but I could see um, across the way out the window. Just this incredible looking desert with these houses scattered everywhere. It's so pretty. And of course, Jordan is the home to Petra, one of the seven wonders of the world. And man, I really need to come back here. I'll be back. I'll be back. One more hour. Welcome to Cairo. Oh, the excitement. It's only about six o'clock, so food, hotel, hotel, food, something along those lines. What's up, buddy? <laughs> oh, man. Can't believe I'm here. This is a place I've dreamed about coming ever since working on my Beyond Science channel. I talk about this country so much. It's such a short trip because our, our timeline for Pakistan is so tight. I'm at the airport only. I already love it. Nice cozy little room. I love how in like other countries you always get like a like a fruit pack, little desserts. Ooh. That river right there, that's the Nile, baby. Oh man, it's just so amazing being here finally. This is gonna be a fun adventure. I'm gonna be in Cairo for two days, so tomorrow and the next day, going on a couple of food tours. Um, and then heading towards Alexandria. I'm gonna be there for about a day and a half. Then gonna head into Pakistan. Again, my only regret, not being able to go to Luxor. More reason to come back. Right now, gotta go get some food. So hungry. First meal in Egypt is gonna be McDonald's. All right, that might be, seem really weird and why would I ever do that? Six words for you. It's late, jet lag, nothing open. I was really curious to see what McDonald's in this country is all about. Menu items are pretty similar to what they are in the U.S. Chicken makdo, spicy. Sure. Chocolate hazelnut pie. Fanta apple. It's a McFizzy. Yeah. There's something that really sets McDonald's and Egypt apart. Look at the size of this. This is a ginormous burger. I mean, the McDonald's burger here in Egypt can literally eat McDonald's burgers in the US. And when it sees it, it would just be all carnivorous and just gobble it up. I always complain that McDonald's shrunk their burger. I know they did. I don't have proof, but I know they did. That message didn't get to Egypt. I mean, this is just a behemoth. First time in McDonald's history, like since I was 13, I don't know, I need two hands to hold up a McDonald's burger. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Sesame seed bun, giant beef patty, cheese. There's nothing really extraordinarily different. This baby should be playing baseball. It's all juiced up. Mmm. Nice, yummy beef patty. I take really big bites. And usually after two massive bites from me, any McDonald's burger, could be reduced to about, I don't know, half its size. Not this thing, I barely made a dent. Of course, the fries are good anywhere. It's cheesy, it's creamy, patty's pretty tender. I do really like the fact that this might actually fill me up. I, I can never see that about McDonald's burgers before. This is the spicy chicken. It's definitely very unimpressive looking. 
and it's tiny. I mean, this is not the best thing in the world, but it just tastes like a mixed spicy chicken sandwich. This is the only thing truly different, a chocolate hazelnut pie. And it is crispy. Look at all these bubbles that you can just pop. And when they pop, it's more satisfying than a bubble wrap. Oh, it just crackled open. Oh, man. Look at that lava flow. Oh. I like McDonald's pies, I think across the board. Most places I've been to in the world, much better than their burgers. It's just so pies and french fries, I think we all be pretty happy. I don't know. What's genius about McDonald's pies is that before you even get into the filling, the crust already has won you over. And it's so crispy and flaky. The inside, the hazelnut chocolate cream, that's delicious, very nutty. Of course, huge chocolatey flavor. I don't like it as much, as I do um, the pineapple pie or the other fruity pies they made around the world, but you hear that crunch? It's still better than the plain old American pie that we had back in the States. Overall, Egypt McDonald's, quality is good. The burgers, just like his pyramids, are mysteriously ginormous. Huge food day coming up tomorrow. I'm also super jet lagged, so McDonald's, gym to cancel the McDonald's a little bit, and then after bed. Good night. Good morning. Let's go find some food. But it's just okay. But <clears throat> sitting next to the Nile, munching on a breakfast buffet, pretty much a dream come true for me. I gotta eat up because after this, I gotta go see the pyramids. Pyramids of Giza. Pretty sure we're getting scammed right now, but uh, I'll talk about that later. Got the Sphinx, the three pyramids. Oh, it's awesome. Horse and carriage. That's Abraham. Yeah, how are Hi, buddy. You? Crazy. I'm actually going into. All right, we're in a tomb right now. Really, not much to see. Just this very claustrophobic room. I'm good. It's hot down here. And of course, jack wagons had to put their names on the wall. Jeez. So we just got passed off onto a guy who's uh, take us to a camel. And I'm sure this this camel will be. This is the father one. King Kiyos. Pretty pricey. All right, so we made it out of the pyramids. So here's the scam, and definitely watch out for this. You take a Uber in, and right before you get into the gate of the pyramids, uh, there's these guys who are just waving your car into like like a little garage type area. And then what they do is they, they convince you, they try to convince you that you gotta take a carriage to go up. Otherwise you can't go, you can't go up. And we ended up paying, it was two, two people for two hours, like 1400, because like, honestly, like I knew it was gonna be overcharged. I knew it was gonna be kind of a scam situation. I didn't know how bad it was gonna be. And also this is kind of like my nature. I, I am pretty gullible. Like I always wanna see the best in people and think like, okay, it wouldn't get too bad. It wouldn't get too crazy. Even if it's a scam, it's not gonna be insane. But it is. So we go in there and he takes us to these like tombs where you gotta pay the security guards in front of the tomb. 
And then the word came to camel people. It took us to the camel people. It was like, oh, you got to get this panoramic shot of the pyramids. It's great. So what they do is they walk the camel, not even that far, like maybe five minutes. And then they say, give us your money. You pay me now. And while they're holding your phones, because they're, they're just using your phones to take a photo, it's almost like a hostage situation. What they said was, you can just pay us anything. We'll be happy. That's not the case. They want a lot from you. Like they were asking for about a hundred US dollars a person for like a three minute camel ride. And it's just pure extortion. So I'm like, nope, nope, here, you know what? Here's, this is like, you can take like, you know, a hundred pounds if you want. I'll just let you have it, take us back. And they were like, no, no, no. Then I started recording and uh, he's like, no, you can stop recording, stop recording. The guy literally had my phone. I mean, I was, even, I was thinking about this. I was like, should I give him my phone to take a photo? All right, he'll give it back. Again, too trusting. So lesson learned, don't ever do something like this. No carriage ride, no camera ride. What kind of got us was that the Uber driver kind of went with it and the Uber driver kind of pulled into the thing like it was a legitimate stop. What he should have done was kept going and go to the gate where we could have just got tickets and went in through that way. But end of the day, don't do it. Especially do not do this camel thing. Don't want any of you guys to be in the same situation I was in. I mean, pyramids are beautiful, majestic, it's great. So those are some of the things to look out for when you do visit the pyramids. And you should, it's beautiful. It's one of the most, most majestically magnificent things I've ever seen in my life. But watch out for all that. All right, back at the hotel. So there's a few things that I, I feel like I really should have done differently um, in order to not face this crazy situation. One was definitely do my research before to go into the pyramids. And if you want to ride a horse and carriage, you can actually approach these guys uh, and negotiate a term without the stable being involved. And I think most people say you can get one for about a hundred Egyptian pounds so maybe that's per person but definitely not the 350 pounds per hour per person price that I paid I mean we did get some of the money back because I basically threatened to cause a big scene in front of the camel people so he was like yeah okay I'll give you some of your money back try to get a reputable guide or go with like a group tour or something and most Egyptians I met have been really warm and, and really kind but this did leave a really sour taste in my mouth like this is something you have to be aware of when you come into this country. I mean, these are like major scams run by the, the from the from the taxi drivers to the carriage drivers to everybody involved. Everyone has a taste of it. It's such a beautiful place with great people. It's a shame that this has to be the, the huge blemish on otherwise beautiful culture, really sweet, warm people. All right, tomorrow heading to Alexandria, one of the great food cities of Egypt, and then Pakistan. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. See you later. Don't ride the camels at, at the pyramids because they're scamels. Get scam. I, I just thought of that. I had to. I'm sorry. I, sorry, pardon the interruption. Now the video is over. Scamo. Okay, remember, they're scamels.